Here are the top reasons I have noticed the most medical school applicants get rejected and how you could avoid them. There is, you know, it's a lot of time and money and energy that goes into the application process. And the majority of medical school applicants get rejected every year. And some of them apply again, they get rejected again. A lot of them just give up and never apply again. But why is this happening? Is it because, you know, it's some sort of a uh, maze that's been put in front of you that is impossible to uh, navigate? in an effort to make sure only certain type of people get into these type of professions? Well, I've talked about this in previous episodes. And yes, that's part of it. So if you, if you had that thought that, oh, you know what, there might be a conspiracy, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if there's a conspiracy or not. But yes, the way it's designed is completely flawed. And it does get certain people, keep, keeps a certain type of people outside completely. Okay? So yes, but there are some other reasons I want to talk about today. But before I do that, I want to introduce myself in case you haven't watched any of these before. My name is Beruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder at bmarketingconsulting.com. And I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Admissions Expert One Question Podcast, where I take one topic, slice and dice it any way I can to help you in your journey so that you can successfully na navigate the medical school application process and beyond, and hopefully you never have to apply again. So with that said, let's get right into it and discuss some of the reasons why we've seen after helping literally tens of thousands of students get into medical school, why some people get in, why some don't. Well, a part of it I already told you, it's because the system is flawed. Until the system is in place, certain people will never get in. That's why I've made it my life mission to make sure I give you as much information so that no matter what type of background you come from, you have the access to the information so you could do uh, all of these things on your own if you wanted to. So it's not a barrier to, due to access to information. So, but what are some of the reasons? Well, so let's go, let's start with the obvious ones. Poor MCAT, poor GPA. That's two reasons right there. How do you do, how do you, you know, I've had another episode where I tell you how MCAT and GPA are BS and they're just like, you know, they should be banned, but hey, they're not banned. You have to do them. What do you do? You got to make sure, look to make sure, are you doing the right, are you putting the right amount of effort? Okay. A lot of people complain, hey, I cannot do well. Are you doing the right amount of effort? If I come and hang out with you for a full day, are you literally studying from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep or it's just like willy nilly, you don't really study. And if you do study for an hour, every 10 seconds is interrupted with your phone, social media, blah, 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 blah. Like you don't have any organization. Well, you have to be honest with yourself. I don't know, you know. Your friend doesn't know, you know. Your parents don't know, you know. You need to make sure that you've, A, you're putting the right amount of effort. If you're not getting results, do three times as much. If you're studying one hour, to study three hours uninterrupted. If it's still not work, study nine hours at a time, right? It's a simple solution. There's nobody who's a genius. I am yet to meet a pre-med who is successful, who is a genius, actually in any part of life. I have not met a genius in life. There are people who have good discipline. There are those who have bad discipline and they're just lazy. I mean, laziness is a habit. You understand that, right? You have to have the discipline to get going. And if you want to do well, you want to be a future doctor, you have to have discipline. Like as much as I think MCAT and GPA are uh, crap, I will never allow you to be my doctor if you don't have discipline, sorry. Or uh, anybody I know for that matter. So GPA and MCAT, solution is actually the easiest to be honest with you. Just do more. Whatever you're doing, do way more. Do three times, four times, 10 times more. Then we can talk if it's still not working. Third reason is when people apply, I've seen this happen so many times. They apply to so many ridiculous schools where they don't have any chance. Apply to inappropriate schools. Either the strategy is that, oh, I, it's a numbers game. Yes, it is a numbers game a little bit, but not applying to every school because that becomes overwhelming. You can't do all the applications. Two, you have to choose only the schools where you have a realistic chance of getting in based on your GPA, your MCAT, your, your extracurricular activities, et cetera, et cetera, based on their mission statement, right? That's what you got to do. If none of them meet, well, then just don't apply. Wait a year, improve yourself, then apply. It's better than demotivating yourself with a rejection letter. Makes no sense. Inappropriate experiences. And when I say that is, you know, on that application is, I notice people either put in everything they've ever done in their life, even whether if it was 10 seconds or 10 years, they put it all in there. 
and whether it was just something frivolous that has no impact whatsoever versus if they went to literally to Africa, build a thousand homes for 10 years, they came back, they think they should both be equally important. No, it's quality over quantity. People keep saying that, but uh, it's actually harder to implement because you got to figure out all the activities you've ever done, trim it by 90, 95%, only 5% are valuable to put in your application. There is no matter. How do you choose the ones where you have shown enough amount of time and energy, so commitment, and you've actually progressed. So you've gone from like, you know, lab assistant to eventually having your own publication in the lab in like a span of four years. Those are more meaningful. And if you're in the planning stage, plan for those type of activities. Don't try to hop from this or that and hop, 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 hop. That's nobody likes that. Because if you're a medical doctor, there's gonna be no opportunity to hop. You better like that. You better like that for life. Hmm? That makes sense. Uh, if you think about from an admissions officer, mm -hmm. review your application, that's the reason why you want to stick to activities for the long term and show that you're progressing. The other reason is, so that was what? One, two, three, four I've given you. This is reason five. Bad application material. Poor grammar, poor filling, no sense and structure for personal statement or like, you know, uh, resumes or list of activities, not proofread. So it's like sloppy and just bad a bad organization. So obviously that's very easily fixable. How you fix that is usually you start applications early, start early, early, early. Whatever you think is early, start two months before that. Next reason, our sixth, I guess, reason is poor performance on the Casper test. Yes, some of you may not need to prepare that because of your life experiences. So you've prepared for your entire life based on your circumstances. Most of you will require to prepare. Remember, most people get rejected so the concept of you read on some like random forum, some idiot says, nobody needs to prepare. I got in. Well, good for you. You're a minority. Minorities get in. Majority fail. One reason they fail is the Casper test. So now, you know, and you could be like doing poorly at one of these things or any of them. And normally it's like problem at a little bit of problem at each of these steps that I'm telling you. Sixth is like, you know, person doesn't prepare. And it's a sign of arrogance, to be honest with you. And it's like, oh, I don't need to prepare. Uh, why? Who do you think you are? Right? That should be the mentality, but like be humble. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I've done, I'll give you an example. You know, uh, we have uh, our team, uh, some of our admission experts have prepared students, uh, you know, thousands of time. Still, they have the humility to prepare before every single session. When I started this podcast, yes, these are unscripted, but I have the humility to know that I cannot just come and BS my way around. I still prepare, even though I've been doing this for like, you know, 10 years as of, you know, recording this, this episode, I, I still have to prepare. So why would you think it's a test you've never done? You're not going to prepare. You, you would be even more arrogant if you don't prepare a second time. Just think about the concept you need to prepare. I'm not telling you, you got to pay BMO, for example. But I told you, I have nothing to sell you in these episodes. We have a lot of tips and strategies, but prepare and prepare appropriately until you're confident that you could pass the test. Same thing with interviews. That's, I guess, the seventh reason why people get rejected. They don't prepare for their interviews. So imagine you've done everything well. Interview is the last hurdle, and we have never seen a person get into medical school with poor interview performance. Doesn't You could have, literally, I've seen people with perfect MCAT and GPA, perfect Casper score, perfect applications, rejected because of the interview performance. They will not allow that. That's the last step and it's the most important step and it's the most memorable, memorable step for the admissions committee. If they in person, you're like not coherent, you can't make decisions, you don't sound well, you don't know what you're talking about, you're not going to be able to get in. So prepare for interviews. Next one is inappropriate reference letters or letters of recommendation. The person you chose doesn't know you, they don't have anything good to say, to, to say about you, they're not the appropriate experience you wanted to highlight. It has to be from a diverse group of people that can tell about your different characteristics and someone you've actually worked with. So if you just attended a lecture of 2000 people, and even if you got 99 and you ask the professor to write your reference letter, what can they possibly write? They don't know you. This is all they could write. Hi, I have met X in my class, which was bio 101. This person got 99% sincerely. Doctor X, Y, Z. Well, that's not a good reference letter. That's awful. Someone who knows you deeply. Be careful about who you choose. And if you pay attention to all of these things that I mentioned, and it's a combination, I can guarantee you will have two, three, four times chance of other people because most people who apply to medical school, they're just not serious. 
they're just lazy. They don't want to do the hard work. So that's good for you. If, if you could be able to remain consistent and show that you could do all the hard work. And they also, most people also lack the understanding of how much time and money and energy it is required to actually do well at each of these hurdles that I mentioned. I hope this whole thing gave you a little bit of understanding of what you're required to do and what are the common pitfalls so you can avoid this right at the first step. Or if you've been rejected in the past, I hope it gave you some ideas to look back and make corrections. There is no shame in course correction. There's only shame in not trying. That's all I had for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this and you want to motivate a friend, make sure you share it with a friend who may enjoy this as well. Subscribe and comment. And I hope to see you at the next episode. Talk to you soon. Bye.